Hi, I hope that you're doing well. This video is about crystal healing. Um, crystal healing is probably one of the most fascinating modalities out there. Um, I use crystals in everything that I do really. I use it in my daily life. Um, I use it in my tarot and oracle card readings. Um, sometimes I do an actual reading with just crystals themselves. Um, I use them in my Reiki sessions. I, I use it really in everything that I do. I'm also a spiritual regression hypnosis practitioner and um, I, I like to incorporate crystals into my sessions itself. Crystal healing, um, it's, you know, there's obviously the idea that it's a very new age sort of thing, but it's it's, it's been around for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. You look through all the ages, you look through all the sages and the magus and, you know, all the wise ones and the oracles and um, they all use crystals, you know, whether it was the Egyptians or the Mayans or the ancient Africans, they all use them because um, the concept of working with crystals is that you are working with the planet, that you are working with Earth because we are souls that are having a human being experience and it is my belief that everything is energy expressed, that human beings, animals, plants, planet Earth and all the intricacies that goes along with it, that it is all energy expressed in different forms. Um, with all that being said, I think sometimes we forget that crystals are from the Earth, you know, that they are mineral components and um, there's, there's many wonderful things that you can do with them. But, and there's a lot of fantastic information that you can find on crystal healing. You know, you can buy the books and you can um, go on YouTube and you, like, and, you know, you can go on Google. There's a lot of information out there. Um, but sometimes, you know, we, we forget that we are dealing with, you know, natural substances. And um, that actually brought me to, for example, creating this beautiful product that is called Crystal Elixir. And what it really is, is you place a crystal in a very simple form, really. You place a crystal in a glass of water, you place the water out in the sun, and then you can drink it and it infuses the energy of the crystal. Because the way that it really works, crystal healing in its simplest forms, um, it comes from when we understand that we are our bodies. We are basically 60%, a little bit more than 60% water you know and so water has got a very changeable structure and so crystals they give out the energy output at a certain sort of energy output that doesn't change and so when you have a crystal healing session what the body really does it is absorbs the energy output of the crystal okay that is in its very 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 simple form the 101 of 101 okay um <clears throat> But um, so sometimes, you know, we just think that it's okay to just pop a crystal in water and we can just put it out there in the sun, you know, and it's going to be fine. But not always, you know, there, there are certain guidelines that you want to follow. Um, also, I think one of the things that we want to be careful of sometimes is, and I'm not discouraging anybody from... Um, from, from experimenting, you know, and trying and, and applying knowledge. Um, but sometimes I think we want to sort of try and, especially when we work with clients, you know, as human beings, sometimes we can be, we want to be pleasers, you know, and um, we can sometimes want to give them this overwhelming experience where we sort of over-energize them. Because remember, the, the human body, as I said, it, it consists mostly of water. You don't want to over-energize water, all right? Um, it's, for example, like... If you say you're one of those people that make a cup of coffee in the morning or a cup of tea, you know, in the morning and you switch on the kettle and um, then you kind of go and wash your face and you brush your teeth and you haven't made a coffee yet and you switch the kettle on again and then you go take a walk and you play with your cat or you look at your phone or you check out the newspaper or the television or whatever and again you switch on the kettle. So by the time you make the cup of coffee, you've already switched the kettle on four or five times and what happens is that it's sort of the oxygen um, evaporated out of the water and then your coffee tastes, tastes kind of funny you know, and you want to say yeah funny coffee <laughs> and it's the same thing with crystal healing and it's always so fascinating for me you know when I teach um, crystal healing I just share the knowledge that Everything in the universe has an effect on us, and we have an effect on everything else. The moon, for example, um, which goes more into the sort of astrology lines, but the moon has an effect, a gravitational pull on the tidal pools 
of water on planet Earth, you know, high tide and low tide. Certain times, you know, when the moon is full, the tide is higher, the, um, the fish are coming out and the deer is coming out. And then when it's, you know, when the moon is going down or it's um, dead moon or new moon, then a fisherman's going to lay back with his arms folded. He's not even going to bother going down to the water because they understand that it's a waste of time. You know, So whatever happens in the universe has an effect on us because we are bodies mostly of water. And in, so in that same way, crystal healing can have an effect on us because it's about the energy that it gives out. Now, when you study crystal healing, um, everybody obviously has a different way of teaching um, the ancient knowledge. The way that I teach it is I come from a very spiritual point. And when I say spiritual, what, I'm, what I mean is when you have a personal interest in, um, in who you really are. In, in, in what I call discovering the, um, you know, the unique GPS coordinates of your heart, of who you are, you know, of what makes you you. And in its really simplest form, when you really sort of take all the layers and all the fancy talk and everything down, what crystal really healing really is, what energy healing really is, because we are energetic beings working with energy, it is that it takes you back to something called your zero point energy and um, if you are um, if you study energy for example if you're interested in studying energy or um, say for example if you ever maybe studied something like um, traditional tarot for example um, it speaks about that energy that you came into this planet with the reason why you incarnated um, zero point energy the, the sort of plan for your life you know your life plan your soul plan your purpose whatever um, term it is that you'd like to place on it and I always believe that if we can connect with our heart, if we can connect with our soul, then we don't really need to try to do so much because there's already a perfect plan in this world. For us, it is about aligning with it. Now, obviously, with that being said, um, you can have a crystal healing session for many different things. You know, maybe you're struggling with finances or um, with a career or some kind of repetitive um, pattern that keeps on happening over and over. It could maybe be a health problem. Um, in that case, there are definitely specific things that you can do. And uh, what I, the way that I like to to teach is um, is to to get you to understand the basics but also everything around the basics how do you bring yourself to the basics you know and um, if, if you if you train with me uh, and um, really anybody else I, I would imagine who does crystal healing training it is that you can either become a full crystal healer in your own capacity or um, you can add it to another service that you already do. For example, I started with Reiki. Um, I also do um, tarot readings, which I actually started in 2001, when I was still like, very, very young. And um, so you can add it to things. I only really began studying and practicing um, regression hypnosis in 2018, even though I've probably been doing it for, you know, much um, longer before then as guided meditation in my spiritual regression or, or um, in my sort of um, you know crystal healing sessions but um, you there are certain and, and I'm so glad for the training that I have and that I can share this obviously you know not all of it because it's so much um, but when I do teach crystal healing I like to sort of teach just a little bit um, um, about guided meditation with you because you can have a silent session or you can also have a session where you sort of speak to the client you know we don't always have to be so super quiet about things um, because when you place somebody in this beautiful energetic alignment it can sometimes happen for example they can pop into past lives uh, they can maybe unlock some childhood memories that that are pleasant or maybe not so pleasant you know there could be some hidden traumas um things that are holding you back we 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 all really have certain thoughts and limiting beliefs um in our subconscious mind which does play a part in our life and sometimes when you go for a session those things can come out and um you know you 
you sort of want to be prepared and proactive for those things, you know, if they do happen. Because generally you will get a beautiful experience and everybody wakes up smiling, but sometimes somebody can just burst into tears, you know. And you need to understand that that is okay. And it's also good um, if you know how to deal with that sort of situation. And... Um, so yeah, so uh, <laughs> I love these bracelets that I that I actually make this, and the reason why I started to make them is because uh, we it is I don't know what the date is today, September the seventeenth, twenty twenty, and it is um, in the middle of the pandemic. Um, with the global pandemic that's happening at the moment, and there's a lot of fear happening, and. Um, a lot of my clients couldn't come to me as they would come to me before for sessions. Now, with that being said, crystal healing is one of those incredible things that you can actually do in person with a person right where they are with you, or you can actually do it via distance as well because time and space doesn't exist. And I must tell you, when I first heard this, I was like, hmm, this seems a bit like, you know, like a pie in the sky. It seems a little bit far-fetched. But um, I've had incredible, incredible results with people over the years, you know, with distance sessions. So I know for a fact that it worked. It's beautiful. And um, <clears throat> I felt that at this particular point in time that humans needed something more tangible. And so I made these. And this this one, for example, is uh, it's about it's chakra balancing. And that is those energy centers within our body. And when they are balanced, things normally just flow. But because we all have different sort of um, reactions to energy sometimes, you know, the same way as I have with my crystal elixir, I wanted it to be very well thought out. Um, so I, for example... Um, have hematite there with it which is the little silvery bits and what hematite does is it sort of keeps your crystals energized but it also keeps things nice and balanced nice and calm which sort of goes like okay everybody we can relax now there's no need to go crazy um, but it's also really really cool um, for that I've got a bit of a piece of copper in there as well I've got a piece of copper in all my bracelets because copper once again it is a it's a it's a grounding mineral for crystals because crystals are from the earth um, and then this one for example this one is about abundance and um, so the green one over the beautiful green one the banded one that is called malachite and malachite is really loved by the Japanese um, a lot and it's a crystal that people often keep around because, you know, it attracts money. But what it really does is um, it it actually removes the, the sort of energetic blockages that prevent you from attracting money naturally because everything is energy. You know, money is just an energy expressed in a different form. But um, beautiful as malachite is, it's one of those, it's a very, what we call a high vibrational crystal. Like it can make your head a little bit spinny sometimes. It can actually put you into a bit of vertigo and you can start having um, physical, bodily, experiences like like nausea for example you know so with that i placed lava and this is um, literally volcanic lava which is beautiful and calming it's also great for the skin and i also added tiger's eye to it because tiger's eye is incredible for your skin as well because sometimes people have a, um a almost a bit of a chemical reaction to malachite sometimes or if your energy is very sensitive or you maybe got some deep-rooted traumatic emotional issues you can find malachite overwhelming so therefore I added lava and I added the tiger's eye which it, it really sort of balances it out and when you study crystal healing that is when you start to learn all those things and generally um, there's, there's two ways that we can do it you can either have something very simple because I think sometimes we think that you have to be packed full of rocks which is not necessarily the case um, but when you do sort of a more full-on session, which is the most beautiful experience in the world, uh, it is, it's, it's probably like going to the spa, but it's so much better. Um, it, it's just amazing. And your senses open, suddenly you smell better and you see better and you taste better and everything is just more beautiful. But um, so what you would normally then do is there would be a, there'd be a layer of crystals on your skin, but because 
you it's not safe to just place all crystals on the human body for example if you have malachite that is not polished this is a polished one if you've got malachite that is not polished if you've got tiger's eye that is not polished and you just place it on your skin it can actually have a chemical reaction which can be bad for you it can actually leave little marks so in a session you would normally have a layer of crystals on your body and then you normally have a sheet on it and we have another layer of crystals around you um, sometimes you use a pendulum in your sessions for those of you who don't know what a pendulum is it's like a little um, I don't have one with me here now this is just literally an impromptu video but um, <clears throat> there is uh, it's, it's, it's normally like any sort of weight really that is on a on a um, on a string and you can kind of like swing it around and um, in those older sort of movies you normally have people use a pendulum or like a, a clock watch and they go like for the hypnosis videos you will sleep you will sleep which is obviously you know um, a little bit dramatic and not quite exactly the way that it works some people like to, to work with a pendulum some people don't like to work with a pendulum I like working with pendulums however when I actually work with pendulums I generally don't use the ones um, that that that's made of crystal. I would use either a copper one, or ideally I would use a wooden one. And th there's a whole lot of reasons for that, and I'm not even going to go into that right now. But yeah, for me it's really really exciting. Oh, I wanted to teach you a little trick. Um, so there was a gentleman a couple of years ago. Um, Masaru Imoto. Um, he was Japanese and he taught a lot about what we call water alchemy. And um, I'm just going to give you all this one quickly. So you can use it either for like a bottle of water or you can have it for like a glass of water. And with this glass of water, I already have a couple of drops of my crystal elixir in there. And um, so what you do, you can place your intention inside the water. And you're more than welcome to give this a try. So what you do is um, you first take a nice deep breath into your heart space, your center space. And then you visualize that every drop of blood that flows through your heart is filled with that light. So you can, you can have whatever it is that you want to have in there. Hope, peace, um, courage, guidance, strength patience <laughs> you know um, and once you feel that what I always ask you is to visualize then that as I said every drop of blood that flows through your heart is then filled with that light so it goes everywhere inside your body and when you can feel your body feeling good um, or as good as you sometimes can because sometimes it's not that easy what you then do is you visualize or imagine um, that this light from your heart is flowing in all different directions so it goes up and down and back and front and you know left and right and if you visualize it everywhere around you you are encircled in this cocoon of white light and this bubble of light and into this this bubble of white light um, which also obviously goes to our auric field which is the energy field around us you can welcome into the space what it is that you'd like to welcome into your life and you can release that which is not really sort of in line with what you'd like to have for your life and um before you know i always say to people before we look at crystals before we look at sessions before we look at any of those things it is important to first get the balance within yourself right to get the flow within yourself right to get the space in which you're going to work right um before you actually meet a client all right and um also obviously there's many many um sort of um you know videos and articles out there about grounding but you also want to do grounding after your session so you can all sort of nicely come back all from the different you know realms and energy fields that you were back into your human experience so once you have that beautiful flow that is going on what you then do is you take a glass of water or a bottle of water and imagine that there is light that is flowing from the palms of your hand and you place the intention for whatever it is that you want to have into the water and you can just do this for as long as it feels appropriate for you. Some people do it for about 10 minutes. I normally do it for about a minute. And then you just drink it. Mm. Beautiful. And um, that is a wonderful way of working with intention. Because intention is everything in this world, you know. And um, that is really very much the, the, the long and the short of crystal healing. And um, I look forward to maybe teaching you or just connecting and chatting with you, really, 
about all the other things, you know, how we sort of activate them, why we sometimes warm them up before we meet a client. You want to be very careful though with warming up crystals because they warm up really fast. Um, because they work with something called piezoelectricity, which is you sort of war you speed up the molecules inside the crystal. And then they meet your body. It's almost like, you know, life meeting life. It goes like, yay. Um, so I like to go into those deeper, intricate details, you know, when I do coaching, which I share on, on wherever, whoever speaks to me. And um, also I work with angelic realm quite a lot. And um, embracing the ancient knowledge that has always been with us. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your energy, your love and your light. And I wish you all the best. Namaste. Love and light.